AMD is already doing next-gen contracts. You can get a 5090 from the Navy and just more, more good news about Intel's big battle mage. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Wednesday, June 18th, 2025. We're gonna start off with a reminder that this Friday is the live drawing for the PC giveaways that we have going on over on our Twitch channels, twitch.tv forward slash UFD tech. We've got a 5090 PC giveaway going on there. Twitch.tv forward slash UFD music has a 9070 XT PC giveaway going on there. And I saw Reese previewing two whole new album, so we should have some new music dropping on UFD Music sometime soon, in case you want some background music for your work day. You can definitely check that out. And Microsoft has checked out AMD and decided that they're gonna continue the partnership with AMD powering the next-gen consoles. Very strange for that to be happening in the year of 2025, halfway through, but Microsoft commenting that they want an Xbox experience not tied to a store or limited to a single device, and they have a strategic multi-year partnership with AMD, yada, yada, yada. Just essentially making it so that AMD is powering all of their stuff. We already know that they're gonna be in the next generation Xbox ally handhelds, and we kind of already knew that Zen 6 and the next generation of RDNA or UDNA is gonna be in the next generation of consoles because of the leaked slides that came out from that lawsuit that Microsoft was involved in. So this is not necessarily revelatory. It just kind of feels like shareholder posturing if I had to come up with a reason why they're announcing it right now. Just kind of out of nowhere. Maybe it's because the Switch has a lot of attention right now, so they're just trying to claw some of that back. I don't know that PlayStation has all that much. There is some negative press surrounding Microsoft right now just because of the launch of Final Fantasy 16 on that platform has gone very, very poorly, kind of showing that necessarily cross-platforming games doesn't always yield better sales. But it, it was just strange for them to do that. But uh, AMD in your next-gen Xbox, in case you're going to be getting one of those. But in case you want to stick to PCs, you know who you should use? Today's video is sponsored. All right, guys, I've got a secret to share. I like building computers. I know, I know, shocking, right? Well, I have a feeling that you guys do too. And today's sponsor, Jawa, also likes building PCs and saving some cheddar in the process. Jawa is hands down your best option for acquiring a PC upgrade. Between bad stock and insane prices, it's rough out there for the budget builder. But as the number one marketplace for gamers to buy and sell PCs and PC hardware, Jawa has our backs. Whether you're looking for a fully built, ready to play PC or just looking to pick up a new GPU, you've come to the right place. Jawa takes buying and selling seriously. So they make sure that everything on the site is reviewed by a real person before going. Live. Some sellers even prove to Jawa they're extra trustworthy and they get rewarded with a fancy little badge to let you know as a customer this seller is peddling the finest wares in all the land. Now back to the hardware. If you're looking for a quick and affordable upgrade, Jawa has the option to trade in or sell your current hardware to put towards your next upgrade. If upgrading piece by piece isn't your style, you can pick from one of the many pre-built gaming PCs available on Jawa. You can even have them pair you with your ideal PC based on your needs. Once you've got your new PC or new hardware, Snap a quick picture and be sure to show off your victory in the Jawa Discord so budding enthusiasts and seasoned veterans alike can share in your special moment. Make your PC upgrades happen today by checking out Jawa via the link in the description below and save an extra 10% off up to $10 when you use the code UFD10. Huge thanks to Jawa for sponsoring today's video. Well, getting back to the Xbox console thing for a second, there are new details and rumors coming out surrounding the Xbox Ally about its release date, also some speculated pricing. So the idea is that it should be launching sometime towards the end of October, making it perfect for picking up for the holiday season. It makes sense, especially since they already kind of said that it would launch towards the end of this year. The originally speculated price on these things was $500 for the base model and then 800 bucks for the higher end Z2 Extreme model. However, reports are that Microsoft's not confident in that just because of the tariff uncertainty that's happening right now. So they're not quite committing to that price, but that does kind of line up with where the original Ally and Ally X launched. So if they come in at that price point, it does look like they're keeping the prices roughly the same. But in case you want to get graphics cards for slightly cheaper, you might want to head on down to your local Navy Exchange store and grab one there. At least that's what one Redditor did, posting about his experience on Reddit, where they were able to pick up an RTX 5090 for just under MSRP, tax-free, making it a great deal for them. They have a really intense 
16 pin power connector situation going on with the Lee and Lee streamers. It's kind of hilarious, but Navy Exchange Store is for people who have served in the US military. It's not just for everyday civilians, so it's not something that each of us can pick up, but it's also not really available in the online store. The report from the Redditor is that they had like an Apple display case that was filled with these mysterious brown boxes. Turns out it was RTX 50 series GPUs, 70s, 80s, and that one single RTX 5090 that they ended up picking up and installing in their system. This news story is kind of everywhere. A lot of people talking about the good deal that they got from the Navy Exchange store. It doesn't really matter too much for the average person in their everyday practical life, but in case uh, you have somebody that could go check for you, uh, you know, maybe might be worth a shot, especially if you're trying to get a better price than what we see out at Micro Center, Newegg, or Amazon, or otherwise. But you want to save money at those places. Reese, I'm going to bring you the hottest tech deals. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. I'm on the chair again, and hey, these are the deals. Starting us off today, we have this anchor charging dock for Oculus Quest 2. If you're still in the Quest 2 like me, you can grab on for only $19.99, making it $40 off. But then next up, we have this Asus Prime B650 Plus Wi-Fi AM5 ATX motherboard, which you can grab for only only $129.99, making it $30 off. Would you like to do the last one? No. Ah, okay, you're just here for moral support. No. <laughs> moral degradation. That one, yeah. And then lastly today, we have this Asus ROG Strix 25-inch 1080p 380Hz fast IPS gaming monitor going for $279, making it $100 off. Whoa. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'll hand you off back to this guy for the rest of your heart news. <laughs> Cheers. Well, Reese, saving all that money, you might want to toss it towards a golden graphics card because Asus is announcing they're launching another golden astral GPU, the RTX 5080. It's essentially the same as the 5090. It's just a, a smaller GPU core, a $700 worth of gold, just plated onto it. So no revealed pricing on this, but with the $10,000 pricing of the 5090, you can expect this probably to come anywhere in around five to $7,000 if I had to guess. But the RTX 5090 Jensen signed edition got auctioned off for charity and came in at a total price point of $24,200 with the money going to a charitable relief organization to not necessarily just go into NVIDIA's wallets. So at least some good coming out of that. And AMD trying to do good things with their Threadripper CPUs, confirming that in July, they will be launching Threadripper 9000, both the high-end desktop versions as well as the workstation. The high-end desktop is gonna go up to the 9980X with 64 cores, 5.4 gigahertz boost clock, a ton of PCI Express 5.0 lanes, a 350 watt TDP. Then you got the workstation versions, which the 9995WX goes up to 96 cores. That same 5.4 gigahertz max boost, 192 threads, just a massive monster of a chip. They have up to eight channel memory. You can get up to two terabytes of RAM, up to 128 PCI Express lanes, just a monster platform. I don't know if we'll necessarily look into the high-end desktop this time. I know that AMD is trying to bring it back for like content creators that prosumer market people who need it for things like blender or anything that's more cpu intensive maybe maybe we'll look into a 9980x uh this generation who knows especially as we're developing everything here in the south african office there's some room for uh building on a new editor's workstation but in case you wanted to get a cheaper rx 9000 series gpu but you don't want to settle on the 9060 xt reports are that the 9070 gre is at least expanding outside of china right now it's actually going to be launching in taiwan today with it no longer being a chinese market exclusive i am aware of what i am saying about taiwan and china and i am saying it. i'm anticipating comments about how uh there's a dichotomy there anyways uh this is good news for potentially later market expansion for the 9070 gre to hit more people in their pcs later on in case you're holding out for the b770 we've got yet another piece of news confirming that there is positive motion on this graphics card so it originally started with the pci express conference showing off that intel has a pci express 5.0 16 lane GPU that has not yet been announced. Then we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that it is appearing in Linux drivers, four different versions of this big battle mage BG31 GPU, likely a B750, B770, and then two pro cards if I had to guess. And now it is appearing in IDA64 with the battle mage BMG G31 actually appearing in IDA64's extreme update. Also support for PCI Express 7.0 
controllers and devices. So just kind of anticipating the future here, but all good news pointing to that we should get a larger Battle Mage launch, hopefully sooner rather than later. I'm anticipating, at least based on all the rumors, that by the end of Q4, you know, towards the end of this year, we should have that rolling out. I won't try to speculate on performance level or price, but if it's just an expansion of what we already have in the B580, I expect it to be quite competitive in the current market. And you guys compete for my attention in the comments, so let's see what you had to say. We got UFD Tech saying, yes, we know there's an autofocus issue in this episode. It was a bit hectic getting it all set up today. It'll be better tomorrow, and I hopefully hope that it actually is. It looks like it is uh, based on my side. Yesterday was just a wild day. We finally got fiber installed in this place, so we're no longer working on hack together internet solutions. We're able to get things done a little bit quicker um, here at the UFD Tech South African office. Things are starting to move forward that way. It just took a while because they installed the fiber line before uh, 9 a.m., but then they configured our uh, optical network terminal incorrectly, and so I had to like deal with support and try to get them to reconfigure it remotely. They finally did halfway through the day, and then by that point, I had other appointments that I needed to go to, and then finally we were able to film towards the later part of the afternoon, trying to get it rushed so that Rickus could actually edit it. Sorry for the autofocus issue. Uh, hopefully things should be better as we move forward. And Petrolhead said, I'm kind of new to the channel, so I don't know the whole lore behind the team being split between South Africa and USA but I love seeing how happy Brett and Reese are being on camera together. Yeah, it's good to be back. It's lovely. I started the channel here uh, rough. Well, I started in America, but I kind of took it seriously here in South Africa. August 2015 is when I started like regularly producing videos because we were here for work and, you know, just kind of developed the channel from there. Hired Reese um, 2017? November of 2017, so he's been here for quite a while. We had to go back to the US for my son's medical condition because he wasn't able to get the proper treatment here. But now, as we are six years past that point, we have investigated and we can get the proper treatment for him. We're also uh, better advocates for him as parents, understanding the medical system a little bit better, understanding his situation a little bit better. And so we're confident that we can, uh, we can make it happen and we never wanted to leave. So uh, now that we see that this is uh, possible, we are back. But this has been two years of planning. This is not a quick move. We're not even done with America right now. You will see plenty of hot news is back at the old American set. Uh, in the near future. We are working on this. This trip was a big step in terms of getting things set up and making sure that everything is prepared for my son medically when we get back. And then James Cavanaugh saying, as someone who just drove from Michigan to Virginia and back, I'm shocked that you would want to leave the majestic beauty of the Pennsylvania Turnpike. I don't know if this is sarcasm or facetiousness because the Pennsylvania Turnpike is actually like a, it's a nice road in terms of like, uh, it's, it's not as crappy as some other interstates out there. It's just also uh, the most expensive toll road uh, in the United States. And depending on which metric you use, the most expensive public toll road uh, toll road in the entire world. It's like $100 each way to go to Philly and Pittsburgh. It's ridiculous. It's cheaper if you get like Easy Pass or whatever, but uh, I'm not gonna miss that. I'm not gonna miss the money that it costs for me to uh, take my son to the children's hospital out in Philly. And then Giuseppe saying, stop using iPhones to do your video. They don't know how to focus. This is the same camera we've been using for ages. This is the A7S III. The problem, as far as I understand it, was Reese and I were too dark against a very, very bright background. And like it was a contrast-based focus uh, situation. So it was pulling on the brighter stuff in the background because Reese and I weren't properly illuminated. That was just because we had to film outside because we were doing it at like, uh, I think like 2 p.m. So the house was occupied, wasn't able to film here in this normal spot and just didn't get it set up properly. But uh, hopefully it won't be an issue moving forward. And I will see you back here for more of the hottest tech news soon.